Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Doug. I'm a wildlife photographer from Gilray, California. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set the Canon EOS R7 up for triple button autofocus. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to set it up for dual back button autofocus as well. And just before we get started, a little heads up. I'm going to assume that you know a lot about this camera. You know what all these buttons and dials do. You know what the menu system is all about and how that works. Because I'm going to go fairly rapidly through that section. If you don't, I'll leave links down below to two YouTube videos I recently did on this camera that are both deep dives into what all these buttons and dials do, what the menu does, how you set it up for bird photography. One's 45 minutes long and one's an hour and a half long for kind of beginners. So I would go to one of those videos first if you don't know much about this camera. All right, off we go. All right, guys, let's set up triple button autofocus on this EOS R7. What does that even mean? That means we're going to set up the front button here, also known as the shutter button, also known as the release button. We're going to set up the AF on button and we're going to set up the star button. Those are the three buttons we're going to set up. And we're going to set them up to engage different combinations of the autofocus system. Remember the autofocus system of these Canon mirrorless cameras is made up of four components. There, and you can see them right there. There is a subject detection. That's an AI chip that's on the motherboard of this camera, and it's designed to look for birds, or depending on how you have it set up, to look for animals. Once you've found the animal, there's an option to turn on subject tracking, and it'll track the bird that you just found. If the bird flies around in the frame, like we track, we're locked on the eagle right here, if the bird flies around in the frame, see how the autofocus box stays locked on the target. That's because tracking is on. Uh, so tracking is very cool. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, then there's other components. There's eye detection. You can turn that one on as well. That will really zoom in on the bird and focus right on the eye. Right now, eye detection is off. And now eye detection is on and see how it's grabbed the eagle's eye. Same thing with this owl right here. It's grabbed the eye. Turn it off and it grabs the face. So those are three components. The fourth component are the autofocus areas, also known as autofocus methods, also known as autofocus boxes, also known as autofocus points. There are these little boxes right here, and there's eight of them. We can look at them right there. And yes, I have a modified Q menu, and you can see how to do that in one of my other videos. So there they are. Those are the autofocus areas. I like to call them autofocus boxes because they're all boxes and you can toggle between whichever one you want. Don't want that one, just go to a different one and you use different ones of these in different situations. I constantly flipping between these when I'm out in the field. So very cool. They're kind of like the sight of a BB gun is the analogy I like to use. Where if you've ever shot a BB gun, you have to put the sight on the tin can, squeeze the trigger, and the BB hits the tin can. It's the same thing here. You have to put the sight, only it's an autofocus box, so you have to put that on the bird. The trigger is the shutter button. Push the trigger halfway down to engage the autofocus or start it up, assuming that's the way you have it set up, and then full press the shutter to take the picture. Okay, that's kind of the way things work there. So there is another option with eye detection. You can have eye detection plus tracking engage. I don't recommend doing that one. It doesn't work as good. You have to hold a button down all the time to engage it, and I just don't recommend it. The subject tracking here within the menu system is much, much better. So that's all I'll say about that one. Okay, now that we're all on the same page with the auto system and its components, Let's set up the front button or the shutter button or the release button. Let's set this button up to do something, to start up the autofocus components that we have dialed up. So by default, guys, it's already set up. You half press this button down and it starts up the autofocus components, whichever ones you have dialed up. How do you know it started? Because when you half press it, it turns blue. And because we have detection and tracking on, it's 
looking for a bird. Um, and that's one of the problems. Some people like them, some people don't. But one of the problems with autofocus detection and autofocus tracking is you lose the functionality of your autofocus box. You see, it basically disappears. If I put it on the eagle and I half press to start it up, the box really disappears and it goes off and does what it wants. Same thing. And it, there's a problem with this. If I wanted to shoot pokey down there and I half press, it does. I can't take a picture of pokey. So we have to have another system as well. But let's we'll get to that one. So what components am I going to choose to assign to the shutter button? Well, let's go in and see. So hit the menu and go to AF, that's autofocus menu, and go to number one, and here are the components. And let's just run through these real quickly. So AF operation should always be set to servo. I explained that before. That means that when you half press and start up the autofocus system, it's looking and looking and looking. If the bird takes off flying, it'll still be refocusing, 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 and it'll keep that bird sharp and in the frame. If you have one shot turned on, it will only focus one time, and that's it. It doesn't refocus. See, the autofocus box is frozen. It's green to go. And that might be nice if the bird is a stuffed bird and not moving. You can use that to recompose the bird in the frame. I could take a picture over here. All right. So what else is set up here? The AF area, that's up to you, whatever you want. You're going to be toggling between different ones of those all the time. Uh, and in fact, in a second, I'll show you how to set up a shortcut where we can assign the MFN button to toggle between all of these buttons. How cool is that? Rather than going into the quick menu and taking your eye out of the viewfinder and going like this, it's better to set up a button just to quickly toggle between them. Usually I just have two or three of these set up and I gray out the other ones. But that's what that one is. Now here are the two key ones. We have subject detection. So if you go into that one, you guys will be set to people if you're just getting this thing out of the box. You don't want people, you want animals. So this is where that computer chip is now engaged. That's on the motherboard of this camera. And it's going to look for dogs, cats, birds, and horses. And it does a good job, but computer scientists have spent thousands of hours developing this chip. And uh, now it's set up for animals. It doesn't do anything yet, but when I half press this button, it looks for a bird. Okay, or cat, dog, or horse as well. It won't do great for looking for people. So if you're shooting people, make sure you switch over to, to people, which is the default mode. But we're shooting birds, so keep that on animal. Eye detection, we can turn that on. I think yours will probably be on by default. I'm going to show you a button setup where we can toggle between on and off real quickly. Okay, now that's on. Switching track subjects, I recommend setting that to zero. You're going to be set to one. And I explained this in my other videos, but if you set it to zero, the autofocus box is a little bit more sticky on the bird. If it flies behind a branch or it moves behind another bird, it'll try to stay locked on the original target. So that's what I recommend there. And I'm not going to go through everything because we've already done that. If I just want to show you one more, though. Make sure you're on auto here for these cases. And I explained that thoroughly in other videos. All right, great. So now we have all the components of the autofocus system set up the way we want them, and they will all be started when you push the shutter button halfway down. How do you know? Because they turn green. All right. So and as I demonstrated before, this is very powerful. All right, just a final check. Let's make sure everything is set. So servo, whatever autofocus area you, you want, subject tracking on, subject detection to animals, eye detection on, enabled, switching track subjects to zero, and cases will be set to auto. Great, and now what have we done? Well, we've assigned all of those components of the autofocus system to the shutter button. And again, when we half press the shutter button, we start them up. And it's locked right on the eagle's eye. Can you see that? Let's go over to the salt and pepper owl. 
Great, it's locked right on the owl. And if the owl starts flying around, it'll stay or it'll try to stay locked on that owl like it is now. Why is it locking on the owl like that? Because we have subject tracking on. Got it? It's as simple as that, guys. But now let me show you a scenario which will come up when you're out in the field. So if we line Pokey up and we have the autofocus box on Pokey and we half press, you see how it jumps on the owl? So I'm having trouble getting pokey. If I work at it, I might be able to get it to stick on pokey. No. So that's a problem. What do we do? Well, we have to have a way to quickly turn off subject detection and subject tracking because that's the problem. So we could go into the menu and we could go back to number one and we could turn them off right here, but that's way too slow. The bird will be long gone. So I have to have a way to quickly do that. And why not set up the AF on button to do that? So that's going to be our second button. When tracking and detection aren't behaving, we can hit the AF on button and turn them off. And then we take control of where the autofocus is going to be looking. So this is really easy to set up. We're going to be using this path a lot. So let's go into menu, little camera. Let's go to number three. And let's go to customize buttons. Let's go into that. You can tap on that or you can hit the Q button here. And let's put the little glowing orange dot on the AF on button. You can use any dial to make that little button move around. There it is right there. Make sure you're in the left hand column. Those are the camera settings or the stills mode settings. The movie camera settings are separate so you can also set up the movie camera the same way. But let's go into that and if you remember one thing from this video remember to always look into an info detail button if it's there because this is super powerful. These are override settings, guys. These will override if they're engaged, they're not checked or set yet. But if you check these boxes, these settings will override the settings in the menu. Okay, so very, very powerful. So let's fix our problem. Let's use a spot autofocus. This is how I usually set it up. I'll show you another way in a second. So always remember this, check it and set it check it and set it. So we checked it and now let's go set it. I think I missed it, didn't I? Yep, and let's use this, just so we can see it better, let's use the one point autofocus box. It's a little bit bigger. This one is the spot autofocus. That's a little bit smaller, but just for the video, let's use that one. Great, so when I push this button, it doesn't matter what autofocus point is up, now, if I push and hold that button down, that single autofocus point will pop up. So now, subject tracking, let's turn that off. So check it. And set it to off. Great. Subject detection. Check it. And set it. It's on animals, now we want it off. Guys, these two have to be together. I know what you're thinking. Well, let's leave detection on to help the autofocus box out. If you turn on detection, it will go outside the boundaries of the box. These two both have to be turned off. Eye detection doesn't have to be messed with. If these two are off, eye detection doesn't work. Okay, now be careful when you're going out of this menu to really make these changes. That's two steps. You have to hit the menu button and you have to hit the OK button. Okay, now let's go back to our scenario where, okay, we can't get a picture of the little red horse there whose name is Pokey. So let's hit the AF on button. Autofocus has started. Now there's a blue box and it's not jumping anywhere. So I push down, take the picture, and we'll have a nice sharp picture of Pokey. All right. So again, to recap, if I half press the shutter down, we're taking the settings from the main menu. If I press and hold the AF on button, 
we're using the override settings from the AF on menu itself. Right, guys? So that's it. Uh, let's set up one more box. Let's say, oh, and notice how it changes. There's the autofocus point. That's a four, that has four helper boxes around it. Notice how it changes to the single autofocus point. Why? Because we have it set up like that in the AF on menu. Right, guys? So there we, I mean, that's pretty much all you need. We could set up a third one, too. Maybe you want a little larger autofocus box. So we can set that up on the star button the same way. Go into menu, go into custom buttons. Let's go find the star. Let's go into it. And by default, you'll be right here. And that's called the AE lock button. But there is right next to it, there's another autofocus button. And it's it says it's going to start up the autofocus system, which is great. And it's also got an info detailed set menu. So let's go into that. That's great. And let's go choose what we want. So autofocus area, let's set it up, check it, and now let's go set it. And you pick, guys, whatever box you want. Uh, let's just use one of these flexible zones so we can see the difference. All right. And again, we have to turn off tracking. So let's check it and set it. It's already set to off. Subject detection needs to be turned off. And it is. Check it. Set it. Go out of the menu carefully. Men menu. And then click OK. And now we have a different option. If we hit the AF on button, we have a single autofocus point box. We snap that in the middle. So AF on button. If we hit the star button, now we have a flexible zone which we can adjust. That's it, guys. That's triple button autofocus. Uh, we've just set it up. Now I promised you a couple bonuses here. Let me show you how to set up the MFN button here on the front to toggle between the different autofocus points. It's really easy. Let's go into here, customize buttons. Let's find the MFN button. There it is right there, multi-function button. Let's go into it. You guys will be set just like that. Just go down one and over one to this direct AF area selection button. Guys, that is so useful. And you can set it up other places as well. And now I can toggle between the different autofocus points by just clicking that button. See them toggling? How cool is that? And we can get rid of some of those as well. I don't need all those. I just need two or maybe three of those when I go out birding. Um, but that's handy. All right, guys, I promised one more button. So how do I do this? That's pretty cool, isn't it? So I'm actually hitting this button. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think you probably can. That's the, the DOF button, the depth of field button. We can turn that on all the time in the main menu. I showed you how to do that in the last video. So we really don't need it. Let's go find it and set it up to toggle between I autofocus on, I autofocus off. Customize buttons. Let's go find it. You got to turn quite a ways to find it. There it is. Let's go in. You guys will be right there. And there's two eyeballs down here. So the first one you don't want. So this is eye detection autofocus. This is eye detection and tracking. And I, it doesn't work. It's better to turn tracking on in the menu like I've shown you. So don't use that one. But right next to it, there's just a plain old eyeball with eye detection. That's what you want. Click OK. And now when you hit the DOF button with this part of your finger, it takes a little getting used to. I'm so used to it, it's, it's second nature to me. Uh, eye detection on, eye detection off. Eye detection on, eye detection off. That's very handy because when you're out birding, you don't want eye detection on if the bird is far away and you can't really see the eye. If the bird is really big in the frame, then by all means, turn it on so you can have the autofocus jump right onto the eye so you'll get a super sharp shot of the eye. All right, guys, in the next section, I'll show you how to set up dual back button autofocus. All right, guys, let me show you how to set up dual back button autofocus. So what's the difference between triple button autofocus versus dual back button autofocus? On dual back button autofocus, you take the autofocus start off the shutter button. 
So when you press the shutter with dual back button autofocus, it just takes the picture. It doesn't start up the autofocus system. So how are we going to do it? That's easy. Let's go in. Customize buttons. And there it is. There's the, the shutter button right there. Let's go into it. And you can see it's starting the autofocus, AF start. And what does metering mean? If you're using any of the automatic modes, the camera will look at the scene and set the exposure triangle uh, when it meters. So it can't turn that off, but I'm not using it because I shoot in full manual. But it is starting the autofocus up when we don't want that. If you hit the second one, it does not start up the autofocus. It just meters. This one doesn't do anything. So hit that second one, click OK, and now watch what happens. There's the autofocus box. When I half press the shutter, nothing happens. I can take a picture, but nothing happens. Okay, so how are you going to start the autofocus? And guys, I've reset all these, the AF on button and the star button, I've reset those to defaults. So by default, if you hit the AF on button, it starts up the autofocus system. So now all the components of the autofocus system that we set up in the menu are started by hitting the AF on button. It's as simple as that. You really don't need to do anything except turn off the autofocus start on the shutter button. And now we're using single back button autofocus. Okay. If I want to make a change to that, I just, let's say, let's turn off eye detection. You just turn off eye detection. And now we're, we got the face instead of the eye. See how that works? You can see tracking is still on. Subject recognition is still on. Simple as that, guys. But now, how do we handle this scenario when we go down to Pokey and we try to get Pokey, a picture of Pokey, the little horsey, and it doesn't work? See, it's locking on the owl. So now we need to set up another back button. So let's set the star button up to turn off detection and tracking because that's the reason we can't get pokey because detection is detecting the owl and not the horse. Okay, so we need to turn that off and go back to a traditional autofocus box which obeys the laws that say you have to you have to autofocus within the perimeters of the box. That's how the R5 and the R6 work. Okay, so let's go into the star button and fix it. Same old course, go to little camera, Go to number three, go down to customize buttons, and let's go find the star button, also known as the AE lock button. There it is right there. Let's go into that. That'll be there by default. So just scooch over one to metering, and oh look, there's an AF start. So we can start it up like that, and oh look, there's an info detail set. Those are where the override settings live. So let's go into those. And guys, set it up however you want. In our situation, we have to be able to turn off detection and tracking. So let's turn them off. Remember, check it and set it. So check them both and now set them both. They're off already, but make sure they're off. They might be like that. Set it to off. So now when I press and hold the star button, subject detection will be turned off from the main menu temporarily as long as I hold that button. Subject tracking, the same thing. Turn it off. Great. Now be careful coming out of here. If it's not working, you probably messed this up. You just have to hit menu. The settings aren't saved yet. You have to hit the OK button. So be careful when you come out of there. But now when we try to get pokey, okay, it's not working very good for pokey. Hit the star button and detection and tracking are off and we can get pokey no problem. Okay. Want a different autofocus point? the setup still work that we did in the last one. Let me put those in the middle so you can see them. Remember we set up the MFM button to toggle between these? So you can change them like that. And let's go down and get pokey again. Okay, it's jumping, right? Uh, but I can see that the, my box is on pokey. Hit the star button and there we go. Got pokey, no problem. Guys, that's all there is to it. Um, you can assign a autofocus box to the star button if you would like that, or you can just leave that by default where we can just toggle between the autofocus boxes. You don't need to do that. Really, guys, that's it. That's dual button autofocus. Push the AF on. 
Where does that get its autofocus components from? The main menu. If it doesn't work, hit the star button. And where does that get its autofocus components from? That gets it from the override menu in the star menu. All right, does that make sense? To recap, I've showed you how to set up triple button autofocus, and I've also showed you how to set up dual back button autofocus. There's other ways to set these up, but these are the simplest and easiest, and I think they'll serve you well. Which method do I like to use? I use shutter button autofocus. Why? Because really, when you're out holding a heavy lens, this is your hand position. And my old hands can't reach the AF on button. I have to push in like this, and I have to hit the AF on button with this part of my thumb, and that's not so good at hitting it sometimes. So sometimes I hit it, sometimes I lose it, and it just is a pain. It's a little tiny button. Why not just use the shutter button? Well, what's the beauty? What's the big deal about this back button autofocus anyway? The beauty of it is that once you lock on to a bird, see I'm locked on to the eagle, you can recompose in the frame and take the picture and release the shutter button and you're still locked on. If I tried to do that with a shutter button, it wouldn't work. Let me demonstrate that. Let's go turn the shutter button back on so it starts the autofocus and I'll show you. Okay, now we're gonna AF start. We'll start autofocus by the shutter button just like, like before. Now watch, if I half press the shutter, I lock on the eagle, great. I wanna recompose the eagle in the frame. And now I take a picture and release the button. And now it's, I've lost focus. I have to put the eagle back in the center, half press to lock on, recompose and shoot. But when I release, it's released because it'll always try to focus in the center first. So that's the difference. It's not a huge difference, guys. In my opinion, it, it's not worth trying to hit these skinny buttons while you're in the field. But that's, that's the beauty of it, the back button autofocus. It's always focusing. If the bird is flying and you're feathering while the bird flies, uh, you'll stay on focus no problem. You can regain focus in an instant. So for me, it's just not that big of a deal, guys. I keep the bird in the center of the frame anyway when it's flying. So for me, it's it's just better to use the shutter button to start up the autofocus, in my opinion, especially when you're starting out. All right, guys, that'll do it for the video. Consider giving me a thumbs up if you like the video. A lot of hard work goes into making these things. And consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below. I'll get them answered promptly, and we'll see you in the next video.